Hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today, I felt like getting a little messy. So I've got a little project I wanted to show you. Something you can use up some of your old maps with. Uh, but first, we have our sneaky peek to look at. So let me get these goodies out of the way. And I got to remember where I left off. <laughs> I know I've gotten to this point. That, that was what I showed you last time. So, what do we have next? We're getting to the point where I'm almost through the second signature. <laughs> I'll have to do a flip through soon. Well, there's this one, which also has a little envelope in it that you can fold out. I did glue that one, so you can put some little goodies inside there. Uh, and that was from the kit. And there's a pocket that has the same little truck on it. This is another Artie Mays. And then a little collage behind it. Um, had this little cute boot uh, die cut, and I decided to use that. And then the next page, I'll show you that too, because it's not really much to it. There's this pretty little collage up here. I had this yellow butterfly sticker, and he didn't quite go with anything. So I had this page in here, and I thought, oh, perfect. I made this stamp. It's one of those, what do you call it, uh, faux stamps. I did a bunch of those way back, but anyhow. Um, and then this is from Kerry the Crafter. He made these pages, and he called them antiquarian pages. And I loved them. They were, they were gorgeous. He makes up uh, all these different themes, and he can use them throughout all the different journals. You would have probably seen one in my butterfly journal. You probably saw one... And maybe uh, another plant kind of a journal I had. I'm trying to remember where all I've used some. But this one had the butterflies and the flowers on it. Uh, so I decided to use it. It's got like stamping in the background. But you left like patches of kind of bare. And you put a stamp there. And then you do um, in, you know, words and then um, splatter stamps. And anything kind of rustic to make it really dressed up. But yeah, that you'll probably see the other side of that later. <laughs> Much later. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so I'll be doing a uh, a mixed media thing with clear, not clear gesso, white gesso. This is white gesso. And here is my brayer. And I've just got one of those cheap ones. But you can still take the wheel out and clean it and stuff. It's Fiskars. <laughs> so anyhow, what we're going to do, I've got some of my little... Uh, distress inks and I've got some stamps here but that's for later and what you want to do first is find you either one of these old atlases or something else you may have just pages in now I had a project a while back it was called a 321 journal card and I thought I could use one of these because it's like I don't know how long this is it's almost like 20 inches maybe it's 15 inches long and so it would have been perfect. I wouldn't have had to, to piece anything together. And it would have done the job. But it, I thought it was too flimsy for what I wanted. It wouldn't hold in its shape. So I think I had tried to put gesso on it. <laughs> and it still wouldn't really hold in its shape. But what you want to do is you'll just put you a bunch of gesso on here. And you just kind of bray it around. Um, now it'll... You can do it to the side. You don't have to put it on here. I think I may have used too much. But <laughs> anyway, it's to kind of give you the idea. You can do both sides if you want. But for what I'm doing today, I'm calling it a um, a stamped snippet roll. Now, oh God, I did get too much on there. Um, but what, let me find a, a, a piece to uh, <laughs> stamp off of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. That'll help. Anyhow, um, there's a girl that actually does have a video out on stamped snippet rolls. But hers was um, more of the line of... What is that kind of stamping called? It's a... Uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's a, like the uh, aborigine kind of stuff. You make circles and crosses and x's and all kinds of different things well that's a little different than what i'm going to be doing <laughs> so i'm trying to make it a little neater 
Here, let's do that. I'm going to use this when I get done with it, so why not? <laughs> All right. Mostly this is good. This is good. I can go back over that, maybe that little piece again. And that's what you'll just keep doing. You'll just keep going over it and um, going in different directions and that kind of thing. It tones down the background for one, and it will um, give you a base for spraying, because that's what I was going to do next. It was going to be sprayed. Let me sit it behind me. <laughs> and the girl that had already done this was Crafty by Tony, T-O-N-I. So I don't know if you would like to check out hers, but it was called Stamped Snippet Rolls. Okay, let me see if I can wipe off any excess here. And I had all this old uh, craft paper rolls, and it sure come in handy. Well, let me go clean this off real quick. I want to welcome everybody for coming to visit me today, and I thank you greatly. And uh, I wanted to show you what I ended up with. Now, I sprayed after the gesso dried. I sprayed it, but my sprays didn't really attach very well. I'm not sure why. They uh, Maybe I added too much water because I would spray on here and then I would spray with water and try to get it to blend and wash. And I mean, it, it did turn out kind of interesting the way <laughs> it did finally kind of sink in. Now, a little rat didn't chew this. I was trying to, to do the sides to see if I wanted a, a deckle edge or something like that on it. But as you can see, the paper underneath where the gesso didn't reach actually sucked in the color. So that was kind of interesting. Now you can see little splashes here and there. I was trying to use a lot of the browns and uh, uh, mostly browns, I believe. So that was what I ended up with. Now what I decided to do, and they were this narrow. I, had, I have two of them this size. Now this is what I did with the other one. And I think you'll find this interesting. Now, <laughs> what I did is I went in here with one of my Tim Holtz. Um, it's a stamp and stencil set. But I took this part that's called burlap, if you can see that. And I went and I put it on here. And I went around it with a little sponge here and some rusty hinge ink and some aged mahogany ink. And then what I did was uh, I tried to, uh, you know, be kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, <laughs> not too even Steven with it. I wanted it a little, be, a little heavier here, a little lighter there. And then it wasn't that crazy. Uh, it needed some more grunge. It needed grunge. So I added some gathered twigs oxide. And when I was smoothing that out, it kind of smoothed and and uh, blurred some of the little boxes, which was great. It was great. <laughs> then I put a little bit of, um, I think it's some kind of a, a gray color in, a, in an ink, and I did um, a little bit of ground espresso. But anyhow, I did that along the outside edges mostly, and then I still wasn't happy with the edge. So I grabbed this Memento uh, Tuxedo Black, and what I did, and I think I still have a few places here. You can see where I started. It came out really nice and strong. <laughs> so I just ended up kind of dragging it like that. I kind of did, yeah, like that. See the corner? That's probably reduced itself. So <laughs> it's a little stronger now. So that's what happens when you kind of just drag it against the edge and kind of rock it. And then you can like push your finger down there and rub it real good so you get a darker edge. But that's what I did all the way around this. And um, just to give it, um, I don't know, a real, real nice grungy feel. Because what we're going to do with this, I'm putting some bugs on here. <laughs> so I thought that would be a nice basis for these bugs. It, it This kind of gives you the idea that it's a... Um, a wrinkled, a really wrinkled edge, something like that. Um, but it it gives you interest. That's what I wanted really badly. <laughs> interest. Okay, we don't need the gesso no more. Now, what I had decided was I have this stamp set. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. 
I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm going to take one of these, probably this one with the um, script, and I'm going to take this little square one out. And what we're going to do is we're going to make something with that. We are going to dress this baby up. I know it needs a little bit more in that background. Just a little bit. So, oh, I don't think I've used this script stamp. It's not wanting to come off of here. Ooh. Either that or it's got a really good seal on it. Oh. I, uh, I did my... Uh, challenges the last couple of days and whoo i had some fun with those i did one that was think outside the box challenge and what we had to do was use hot glue and oh howdy i loved the way my hot glue situation turned out i gotta do some more of those and uh then the other one i did was my caroline's craft tree challenge and I had to get that one done because the new one's probably coming out today or tomorrow sometime. Oh, I'm playing catch up all the time anymore. Now this little thing is more of a like a black base background. But I have a plan for that. I have a plan. Alright, first we need to do our stamping. And I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Do I want to go black? I'm trying to think if this black will work for me. I've almost drained the poor thing over there. I may need to get another color. Okay, we're going to use this weathered wood. I just tested it up here, and it looks like it'll turn out really good. It's a little lighter than a black, which, and then I think I can do both at the same time here. But I'm just going to do like a patchy job of putting this down, and then we're just going to lay it across here. A little closer. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yes, you needed just a little bit of something else in the background. Yeah, that works for me. So we're going to try to get it as tight as we can here. And see what we can do to dress this up. Just here and there. Doesn't need a, doesn't need a consistent covering. Just a smidge of it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I hope everybody's been doing well and getting into the summer and having nice weather. Ours may finally be getting nice. I still got to get out there and work in those fish ponds and flower gardens though. I just don't seem to be doing that. I think it's called laziness. I, um, I've been working on a couple more of my recipe journals because there was a lady who must have seen it when I first put it in the shop. Now, this was early on. This was back in March, probably, when I put it in the shop. And uh, the girl didn't get it. You know, you snooze, you lose. So my cousin Phyllis came in, and she loved it, so she bought it. So it's gone. And there want that woman coming back. She's coming back, looking for it. <laughs> well... So, I was given the request to uh, see if I could make a couple more. So, I am. I have a couple more I'm doing. And uh, then I'm going to make more of the Builder Journals. Because I seem to have a few people on my Rotus Junk page that are interested in buying. Now, I set that page up to be a uh, a business page so I can sell on there. I'm trying to see if this is going to stamp good. I'm not too sure. I need it to be a little more solid, so we're going to go to another ink. Okay, we're going to go to this ink right here, the Versafine Pigment Ink Onyx Black. I know that's going to give me a nice solid base, and that's what I want for what I plan to do. All right, let's set that down right here and put her down. And what I'm doing, I'm going to be making, oh yeah, that's solid. A nice little frame for something to go on top of it. So I'm going to do one right here. And I'm leaving room in between where I can rip it. Um, now you can do this for any kind of theme. It's, of course, grungy. I'm going grungy right now. I guess I need to leave that lid off of there. I just... Ooh, I have had this 
thing of ink for two years. I don't know. Maybe that's because I'm always covering it back up again. Um, but it's it's very good. It lasted a long, long time. I think I can get two more on here. Oh, oh! Don't stick your finger in it, cause you will get that everywhere else. <laughs> That's why I got my grungy page down. All right, let's put that right there. See how good I got that. Oh, well, it's still not that. I think you do better when you put the pad to the stamp. I really do. All right, our last one right there. And I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other side, but I won't make you watch that. And then I'll probably hit it with a heat gun. And But I was going to show you the little build a journal. I think I showed you in the last video, but this is what I'm going to make more of. And it's got the two pockets inside and I'll have like just blank pages in it. And it's like just a little simple journal for somebody to write in, keep a list in. Uh, just the Imperial Shabby Rose. Some pretty, pretty pages were in that. Oh, I love it. This is the best one. <laughs> so anyhow, let me go ahead and finish these out. And then I'm going to hit them with the heat gun, like I said, and I will be back. Okay, I'm going back a step <laughs> or two. But I wanted to show you after this dried, I was going to show you what to do when you want to spray it. And I've got a walnut stain distress oxide, and then I've got a pumice stone distress spray. Now, the difference in the two, the distress sprays, if you spray a whole bunch of different ones on here and then water it, it becomes real muddy. Now, that's not to say it won't happen with this one as well. But these kind of like blend together. Now, when you put a Distress Oxide on last, that is going to be your top coat. The Oxide will stay on top and not blend in with everybody else. So, I'm going to just uh, get on here and show you a few sprays and what they may look like. This is the Pumice Stone. And you always want to wipe your nose off. <laughs> <laughs> Not your nose, but the little nozzle nose, because it will uh, clog up in a heartbeat. <laughs> now, here's the other one. Ooh, that's why I got my pad on here. But I may have put a little bit too much on there. But then the fun comes when you go to water it. And I'm going to spray it, and it'll kind of like blend around. And that's basically what my pieces did. They just kind of went willy willy. Every, all over the place. Now, you can spray less on here. You can spray more. You can put more water and make it flow better. Whee! There it goes. I probably need me a paper towel. <laughs> but you can make it go all around your uh, page. And like I said, once you get it to where you want it to be, you can hit it with your heat gun and get it to stay there. I'm trying to give it a real, you know, distressed look to it. <laughs> so, however you, and then you can blow it a little bit if you want to blow it in a certain direction. You just have to play. I don't play enough with these things. I need to do more. But, um, that's about all there is to it. Now, after this dries, I can go in with another layer. I'm going with another color. And this map paper is pretty um, wimpy. <laughs> so see, it's not really holding its shape. But it does a pretty decent job. Now you can see where uh, some of that went through to the actual paper itself. And became that color. It stained the paper underneath. Which is great. Um, but this is all you would do. You would just keep going at it. Um, you can go in here with a little bit of water. Now, my sprayer, my Tim Holtz sprayer is not that great. And so I like to get in here with my finger and I'll just do this and I'll flick. And what you do, you flick a little bit and you let it sit there 
on top of some of your distress and then you're going to dab it and look it takes it back off if it's still wet or if you put drops on it it gives you that distressed look now i needed a paper towel instead of this rag because it's just kind of spreading it but you get the idea <laughs> you get the idea that's that's the whole thing here and there you go you can kind of see where i'm going and then you can keep building and look the the blue from the map or the green it's something here is coming out but look oh just that one layer alone look at that that's kind of cool they're, they're so fun to play with i'm gonna set this over to the side <laughs> and uh then i'm going to show you what i ended up here i i did hit them with the heat gun so i hope they're going to work for me and the idea here is that I want to use some bugs. <laughs> I'm going to use, and I do have some mushrooms too. Um, but I may, I may only go with bugs for this time. Because I thought they would be kind of cute framed in each one of these little uh, black areas. And so we're going to go with that. And I have my um, watermark stamp pad. And then we're going to go over top of this with a gold. Let me get that out of the way and pull my gold back out here. There we go. So, got my gold. And this is a gold embossing powder. It's a detail embossing powder. So, it does really fine lines. Uh, so, what am I going to go with first? I like this big beetle bug. We're going to go with the beetle bug. Let's stick him on here. And I'm going to hit him with the Versamark pad. That puts the goo on him. I really need to get rid of this pad and get my new one out. <laughs> that one's had it. All right, so let's go up here to this first one. And we're going to frame our bug right there. I'm going to push it down for just a little bit because I am not sure how much goodie that I put in there or on top of him I mean now the only problem I can foresee here is when you use like that's black what did I do with my paper um Here it is. When you use this black uh, Versafine, a lot of times it likes to pick up the gold as well. So we're going to have to see if that's the case. I hoped with me hitting it with the heat gun, it would have uh, solved that issue. <laughs> but we don't know. Let's see what happens. Oop, nope. Nope, it took the whole kitten caboodle there. So, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Ah. Uh, all right, I think I know. All right, give me a minute. Okay, I also have a clear embossing powder. Now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to experiment. We'll just take that one, and we're going to heat both of these guys up. And we're going to see if that's sealed it enough for me to be able to put my bug on top. <laughs> I mean, most of this is experimentation. And I'm hoping maybe I need to hold that up. I hope you can see that. Ooh, it's turning already. Ah, and it'll make it glossy for me as well. Let's go. Ooh, ooh, ow. <laughs> Don't stick your finger in it. Uh, where is my... Where is my... There they are. Let me grab these. Now, this will make a pretty background, but it wasn't giving me my bug. I'm sorry you can't see. There we go. Oh. All right. Now, see how that did? It 
covered that black and sealed it over for me. Now let's experiment and see if that does the trick. It's always fun to experiment. Okay, I got everything right here. And what I might be able to come back is come back over that with black. I might have to go back over there and get it and see. Okay, let's put our bug right here on top of that now. <laughs> I can see his outline <laughs> kind of on that one. Oh my goodness. Okay, got our bug on there. Now we're going to get back in here with the gold. Try not to get it anywhere else, but right here in this one spot. <laughs> oh. Okay, now let's pour it to the side. Oh, it might have worked that time. Okay, well, let's get this out of the way. Back in the bottle. And so we don't get it everywhere. Now, where's my tweezers? I was hoping for a more refined look, but I'm not too sure I'm going to get it. Now, that is definitely not what I was going for. Hmm. Huh. Okay, my next experimentation here is this. The reason it's not giving me a good detail of the bug is because it's hitting that lumpy surface I just created. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually put our little buggies on a piece of this craft paper. They look really good that way, see? They come out really detailed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rip. We're going to do a little ripping and Rip it real close to the edge and give it a rough edged look. And then we're going to go over it with a little bit of ink. And then we're going to see. I'm going to do that for both. Sometimes things just don't work out. Now, I usually will have mine all figured out. <laughs> I don't get on here unless I have them babies all figured out. I don't know. Is that going to? Yeah, I think it'll work. Now I'm just putting some of my um, gathered twigs on here just to give that edge a little bit of burnt look to it, aged look. And we're just going to pretend that this was like a little picture he had in his notebook or something. Our little botanist guy. Or entomologist, sorry. Entomologist, <laughs> that's the bug guy, isn't it? So he has got his little bugs all figured out. And then we're going to rip around the edge of this one. Now, a layered look is usually always best. I know you were looking at this saying, oh, well, you're taking that big old black square and you're hiding the best part. But I'm trying to teach myself how to layer. And it, it takes... It takes a lot to make me cover something up because <laughs> I'm not one to want to do that. I want the full detail. I was like that in art class. I wanted the full detail. I wanted you to see the, the whole thing, the benefit of the whole thing. Abstract art, mm, that was just not my thing. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I had this one time in our assignment. We had to look in a mirror. And we could, like, we had our paper down below us. We had our pen in our hand. And you could look down below and see uh, where to place your pencil. But after that, you had to look back up at the mirror and you had to draw. You couldn't look at the paper. You had to look at the mirror. <laughs> so that was very interesting. Okay, here's our two bugs. See how nice and aged they look now? Looks like he ripped them out of his old notebook. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take our nice art glitter glue and we're going to stick it on here and we're 
you don't have to really glue it all the way up to the edge if you have a little bit of an edge that sticks up that's all the better I'm hoping it sticks pretty well to the um, the embossed surface. Oh yeah, and I ripped it just small enough that I got my frame in there as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now this one, I don't know. I think we're good. I think we're good. So we're going to go around the outside edge of this one. I was just going to experiment and see which was better, the gold or the black background. And, you know, I don't know. I think I do like the black because you're getting the the grungy, you know, you're getting the grungy. And after I spent all that time on this background, I didn't want to lose it. <laughs> all right, so what I want to do next is I'm gonna, I can go back in here and I can go through all these different little bugs. And I will, but I won't make you suffer and see that. <laughs> I'm going to do that off camera. Um, but I have a distress paint here and I need to put that on something. Where was my, oh, here it is. Okay. So we're going to I'll put the lid on this so it don't come off. Uh, put us a little bit of black paint on here and it's really runny, but I may need to add a little bit of, um, ugh, get out of there. There we go. A little bit of, uh, water to it. Just a little bit. Oh. That was a lot more than I wanted, but oh well. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is some splatters. Can you see my ink? Now they say that um, that a fan brush is the best one to do splatters with. Am I getting enough on there? Oh yeah, oh, they're, it's getting there now. <laughs> and I covered up the rest of it because I didn't want to splatter it yet. Okay, that'll do it. Let me go rinse my brush off real quick. And our piece de resistance, besides the splatters, is some of this. This is a antique bronze mica spray. Uh, now the one's got some gold on it, so I'm not so sure he needs it, but it puts oh, puts a little shimmer. Actually, it's a different color. And the lighter that you push the nozzle, oh. I'm wanting it right up here. <laughs> the the more it'll come out, or the the sketchier it'll come out. Let's say that. <laughs> I use so many technical terms on here. I'm sure you learn so much. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun and see what we got. Okay. Make sure all this. I love this mica spray. You can see it on here. Look at that. It gives you like a a layer right on the top, and uh, it's beautiful. I might need to dab at this because I think I got it on here a little little heavy. There we go. We're just gonna dab at it. It takes so long. Oh my goodness. I think I'm in love. <laughs> I need to do more of these, too. Every time I do something, I keep saying I need to do more. <laughs> Let me hold that up for you. Okay. Now, which do you think? Do you think the gold background? Or do you think the black background? And we got our... Let me wiggle it around. I got my mica spray on there. I got the black splatters on there. Uh, when I get other little creatures on here, it'll look even better. Now, the name of this is a snippet roll, which you would obviously roll it up. And, you know, most, most intense, most intent and purposes, you would do that. But see how I've got that little piece of paper on there now? I'm not so sure that's the best spot for it. So, I made this up a while back. Uh, I think it was Tina at Shabby Dabby Doodah. It was her cluster um, cluster book. So I put all my clusters and stuff in here. But what I'm thinking, and i got so many pages back here, I've got nothing in. What I'm thinking is I can actually staple, or not staple, but uh, paper clip it in here like this. Now see, I could rip that last one off and put it underneath of this. 
I thought that'd be perfect, but I love that. I love those little critters. All right, let's see what else I can do, and I'll come back at the end and show you everybody. Okay, I think we're ready. I've got these all stamped up. I cut out and inked around the edges like I did on the first two. I also went in, there was some little stamps in here, agent and the number one and the little box one, the, the round received one. I took those and I put them around the actual little creature so you have more interest and your eye would be more drawn. You can see the shine from, I did a few with the gold background, like our mistake. That was our mistake, remember? <laughs> so, um, the only thing I can tell you is to try not to squirt uh, too heavily with the uh, mica sprays because they'll just tend to glitter everything. And I mainly just wanted that to be uh, on the edges in dots, that kind of thing. You can take the actual nozzle out and do like uh, the drips off of it or the, the splatters. You can do it that way as well. Here's our locust, and he's got the same kind of technique done to him. And you can see where I kind of left some of them up a little bit. Um, you may have to go back and curl it a little bit uh, if they try to come off your page. But other than that, I think they turned out great. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> now, the place that you would use them is like a page in your journal. You could rip that off right there and stick it here. You can put it on a pocket. You can make it a cluster on the page uh, for some kind of decoration. Um, you could even make it a belly band if you wanted to. It's a kind of a wide belly band, but depending on how you do yours, it may be a skinnier one. <clears throat> if you pre-plan and have one for each thing, because this one's actually a little thinner. So not by much, but a little bit. <laughs> So anyhow, I hope you liked these stamped uh, snippet rolls, and I hope you give them a try. I hope you give some of these products a try. They're so much fun, and um, just get in and play with them. You saw I made mistakes today, um, so I corrected them, or I made them look like they weren't a mistake. So every one of my subscribers and my watchers and my viewers, I want to thank you for coming to visit, and I hope you come back again sometime and see what else I get up to. You just never know. Thank you. Goodbye.